the most important questions for many people starting off in this industry, right? How does someone start in this entertainment industry? There seem to be barriers, especially for women, um, who just can't find these points of entry or mentors. I would just say, I, I don't think any job is a mistake because even the bad ones you learn from. I entered the entertainment industry a little bit later. I had a few different careers before I came to Hollywood. I grew up in LA, but no one in my family was in entertainment. And I w never planned on being a representation. I fell into management. But I like to say it ended up being a job where I've used skills from every job I've ever had, including being a camp counselor in high school. In fact, that's one of the most valuable jobs I've ever had because it teaches you team building and leadership and communication skills. So I think, you know, when I've talked to people coming up, I went to grad school, that's how I ended up coming back to Hollywood. I'd worked in, on Wall Street, I'd ended up moving to Europe because Wall Street wasn't right for me. So don't be afraid to try things as you're coming up because the things you rule out actually help you figure out what you like by learning what you don't like. So that was a big part of my journey in the first kind of decade of my career. I'm a big believer in finding mentors and I know everyone says that and how do you do that and there's no one way. I think fortunately you guys are coming up at a time when there's a ton of information accessible online. When I very, very first started in the industry that wasn't quite as accessible but now you can research people. And I am amazed at how many people do not send fan letters to just business people they admire. And you know, it's easy to send a fan letter to a celebrity you admire, but to send, to, to research an executive and say, I read all about your career, I read your biography, I read this, I read that, can I come and bring you a latte? Can you give me 15 minutes? They may not have the time, they may blow you off, they may not respond, so you gotta have thick skin, but it's amazing how a little flattery goes a long way, and to people on the business side rarely get those. You get asked by your alumni organizations, for sure, but just the sort of random outreach, it takes a little bit of moxie to do that, and coming to events like this where you see, I'm not saying storm us after the panel, but <laughs> where you see people on a panel, you're like, oh, that sounds like someone I could talk to and relate to. There's something about them that inspires you or that you connect to. So finding those people so that you have a trusted person to bounce things off of when you are trying to grow your career. If you are trying to figure out how do I find out what I'm worth? What do people like me making this move do? It's good to have people to talk to who you feel a sense of fearlessness with because it's easy to get intimidated or afraid or not know how much information is okay to share because it makes you look vulnerable or weak. You know, the talent pool has always been an interesting, diverse pool without us even having to try. I mean, I'm sure 20 years ago, the talent pool looked like a bunch of old Jewish men. <laughs> but, um, but the talent pool, it's, it just blows my mind. The young playwrights that we have, we have a young playwright in New York by the name of Dominique Mauriso. African-American woman just takes your breath away, came up with a play written about her life in Detroit in the backdrop being the automotive industry. We took that play, we attached a big producer, Scott Rudin, we sold that. She then went on, to, she's shameless, she's moving her way up, got her a movie, and her play about the Temptations just opened on Broadway last week. So this is the perfect career. We have so many stories like that. A lot of women, a lot of diversity, Indian, whatever. It's, it's interesting that they literally, 15 years ago, it actually was a lot of old guys. They seemed old, they probably weren't, but it was they were ruling the roost. That is completely different today. So it is important that our agency pool reflects our client list. And most of these agency pools don't right now. They are male driven, they are white for the most part, they're good agents, but it's time to open this up and we take that seriously and I'm hoping we can do it. I'm not saying it's gonna be exactly 50-50, but it's a goal by the end of this year. And I think, I think we're on our way. If, you, if we recognize the problem, usually you can fix it.